Hello, it's about six o'clock in the morning at my house, which is the only time I can make a video without my dog barking in the background. Hopefully you're watching this a little bit later than that. Um, we are looking for real and complex roots of polynomial functions. Um, we've gotten really good at solving equations to find the zeros or the x-intercepts, especially when they're real um, and also when they are complex. But what if our polynomial function isn't a quadratic? What if it's got a higher degree than 2? So we're going to start to look at our options for finding those roots. And the function we're starting with is y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 2. And the very first question is how many real solutions uh, could that function have when we're looking for the zeros? Notice we have plugged in zero for y, which means we're looking for those x-intercepts. And when we're working to answer that a question, we really want to focus on the degree because the number of zeros that our um, function is going to have matches the degree. And so for this equation, we can tell by this, x cubed, that's our highest exponent, that um, this function has a degree of 3, which means it's going to have some combination of real and complex roots, but they are going to total 3. So since it has a degree of 3, it's going to have at most or less than or equal to 3 real zeros or solutions. Um, so it definitely will not cross that x-axis more than three times, at most three times. So the next question is asking us to check to verify that we can rewrite this function in this factored form over here, x minus 2, x squared minus x plus 1, because we know that often one of our steps in solving these functions is to write it in factored form. So if that is it in factored form, that's going to be helpful. And the way that we're going to check that is to actually just multiply out x minus 2 and x squared minus x plus 1. And the way we're going to multiply that out is we're going to use a generic rectangle. Um, helps us be accurate, helps us be efficient. And so we'll write each factor along one side. Since it's a binomial times a trinomial, we're going to set up a 2 by 3 grid. And so let's just go ahead and multiply. I'm going to multiply across the top row first. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative x is negative x squared. x times 1 is x. And then across the bottom row, negative 2x squared negative, oh, sorry, positive 2x, a negative times a negative is positive, and then negative 2 times 1 is a negative 2. And of course, before we write that out, we want to just make sure we're combining like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and just circle those for my reference, right? The x squareds will combine, the x's will combine. So let's see, we have x cubed, we have minus 3x squared, because we have a minus 2x squared, and then another minus x squared, plus 3x minus 2. So that's the simplified form of everything inside the generic rectangle. Um, and that, in fact, we see when we multiply it out, the polynomial that we get does match our original polynomial. So that lets us know that we could write it in factored form like that. So C asks us to find um, all of the solutions for this. Um, and so we have x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. We know we can write it in the form x minus 2 times x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. And then um, if this trinomial over here factored more, we would go ahead and do that. But in fact, we would find that it doesn't factor. We're going to need a different strategy. So we're going to go ahead and set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve them one at a time. We have x minus 2 equals 0. And when we add 2 to both sides, we have x equals 2. So, so far, we have one x-intercept at x equals 2. Then we have x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. And that doesn't factor. So we either need to complete the square or we can use quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and use quadratic formula for this one. 
um, when we do that, we have a equals 1, b equals negative 1, and c equals 1, taken from those coefficients. And so plugging in, we have, we have x equals the opposite of negative 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, or negative 1 squared, minus 4 times a, or 1, times c, which is 1 and all of that over 2 times a, or 2 times 1. So x equals 1, plus or minus the square root, negative 1 squared, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, minus 4, all that's under the square root, all over 2. And so when we simplify that, we get 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3, all over 2. So a couple more things to finish simplifying. We have x equals, we're going to want to simplify that square root of negative 3. So x equals 1 plus or minus, we can simplify that to be i root 3, because that factor of negative 1, we can take its square root to get i all over 2. And then our last step is to write it in that a plus bi form to go ahead and split up um, to write it as a complex number. And we do that just by um, splitting our term into two. So x equals one half, which is divide each part by two, plus or minus i root three over two. And this actually gives us two complex roots, right? One half plus i root three over two and one half minus i root three over two. So we can see that we did, in fact, find three zeros or three roots. One of them is real, right? We have one real root, and that was at x equals 2. And we have two complex roots. And those two complex roots are at x equals 1 half plus or minus i root 3 over 2. We were expecting three, and we found all three. If we looked at the graph, we would see an x-intercept at x equals two, and the other roots, um, we wouldn't see any x-intercepts for those.